June 14th, 1968. I had my first experience working with young children. I've now actually been in the field for 50 years. Pretty scary thought. Things have changed. Uh, when I was, I, I started my work uh, for the Department of Recreation in Philadelphia. And I was hired to coach basketball, referee basketball games, create leagues. Oh, and by the way, Steve, would you work with these three and four year olds? I was like, sure, as long as I got to play basketball. And uh, so I have this incredible memory of sitting with those uh, three and four year olds uh, in the shade of the building. And I found a, a case of paste. Do you remember the old paste with the wooden spoon? And we would get the construction paper out, and the kids would dip in, and half the time they ate the paste. But they would eat the paste, they would do their thing, and there was something kind of magic beginning to happen. So that was the beginning of the journey of this 50 years. So I have seen an enormous amount of trends happen in this period. Some are really exciting, some are rather dismal. I think early childhood education in this day right now is probably in its most interesting, challenging place, but it's the best opportunity because people are beginning to understand the importance of what happens early in life. We, I, I started, I worked in a half day uh, preschool program and the biggest challenge was that we had in that half day program was uh, a child would lose a sock or they would spill their juice. That was kind of the extent. The classrooms were um, pretty vanilla in all aspects of that word. And um, the, the challenges were, were fairly minimal, but there was something really inviting and really uh, tantalizing about understanding what I was seeing. So as I dance up the, up the developmental ladder and begin to understand a little bit more the importance of the true impact of early childhood. Looking at classrooms today are significantly different. Our classrooms today are dimly lit. Children being asked to sit and listen for uh, lengthy periods of time which are not in their developmental soul. They are asked to do skill drill things because they will learn. They have to stand in line. I'm working with a school right now where the children have to walk up and down the hallways like this. What is that saying? There is, the classrooms are changing. We have more and more dysregulated children. We have teachers that are fragmented, families that are struggling to find the resources for a morning breakfast, to find the resources to get their children to school on time. Early childhood, and childhood is changing. So as we look at some of the classrooms, and we look at the struggles that teachers have, we're also seeing a breed of teacher that have their own baggage that they bring in the classroom. So we have traumatized children. We have traumatized teachers. We have uh, families with a whole um, collection of, of behaviors and baggage that they're struggling with. So the classrooms are changing. We're seeing children with angry love. Angry love is the child who has no other resources to get their emotional needs met by throwing chairs across the room. The teachers in the room are beginning to uh, would understand that. We're seeing kids that are so dysregulated and they're saying, hold me. Love me. I will do anything, anything to get that, even if it means another beating. We, we are seeing these children come in with angry love. They're highly traumatized. 
and we're seeing teachers that are traumatized and the behaviors are activating secondary trauma for, for, for the classroom. We're helping teachers begin to understand that what we need in classrooms today is ruthless compassion. How to hold the soul of a child even though they're cussing at you, even though they're spitting at you, even though they're throwing in the chair. How do we hold the soul of that frightened, that frightened little baby? Yes, we are seeing changes in early childhood right now. So some of the trends that I have seen, and it's really exciting, with 100 years worth of, of research and observational theory, and we know that all behavior has meaning. Remember that, all behavior has meaning. We also know that what happens early in life lasts a lifetime. The, the, the research that has been done by Kaiser Permanente and the CDC about early trauma and adverse childhood experiences is mapping out the, the, the life history for some of our children. Early trauma has direct impact on long-term health outcomes. So what happens early in life lasts a lifetime. We also know that the brain research says that in the first five years of life is the most critical time of brain development. The most critical time of brain development. So let's put these things together. What happens early in life lasts a lifetime. All behavior has meaning. The critical nature of brain development in the first five years. So I'd like you to drink this in a moment because it means that we can influence a generation in five years. We can influence a generation in five years. So if we want to change society, we must change the way we teach our youngest children. We must change the way we teach our youngest children. We must change the way we support families. We must change the way we are teaching our teachers. We must have teachers understand that they are holding the souls of the children in their charge and that every day is a phenomenon. Every day is a phenomenon. We need to brighten the life for the children in our charge. So as we think about what the impact is, uh, uh, the, what the research says about early childhood. Let's take a look at what the teachers, are, what, what the teachers look like today in our, in our state of Missouri to be an early childhood educator. All you need is to be 18 years of age, free of TB, and not have a felony. Now, that's a bar, isn't it? When you think about the research, the critical brain development in the first five years of life, all behavior has meaning, all of these things make a difference, and yet the standards for the teachers that are holding the souls of our children are so low. A real challenge. They are some of the most lowest paid and under supported educators that you'll find in our country. This is criminal. We need to look at how we invest. So recently, within the past 15 years, recently, in my decades, in my generation, we think about all that research that has been, I'm going to say, ignored until more, more current, more current but we have economic data that says every dollar invested in early childhood has a 13% return on investment. Every dollar invested in early childhood has a $13 return on investment, a 13% return on investment. 
So what I'd like you to do this evening, go home and look at your own portfolio and see how many of you are getting a 13% return on your investment, okay? We need to think about investing in our youngest children, families, and teachers with a completely different lens on how we're going to invest in them. So what we, what we, are, think, what we are doing at Loom Institute right now is thinking, what is in our control? What is in our control right now? We, we spend uh, hours working with teachers and helping teachers understand. So we see five critical components that teachers need to know. First of all, teachers must understand the emotional development of the children in their classrooms. They must understand the, the emotional development of children. Now, that is a one directional piece. Earlier I mentioned that we often have teachers who are coming traumatized. Teachers teach who they are. Think back of the teacher that you had that caused you struggles. Was it you or was it them? So we need to help teachers understand who they are, understand their personal baggage that they bring into the classroom, understand their, their um, implicit bias that they bring in the classroom. Do you know that in the field of early childhood education that preschool age children are expelled three times more than any other grade level? Three times more than any other grade level, preschoolers. In addition, African American boys preschool boys are expelled three times higher than any other culture in preschool. What is it? What's the story? We have to help, help teachers understand who they are. What's the emotional baggage? What's the, what's the uh, 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 social baggage that they bring into the classroom? What are they seeing through their lens if they teach who they are? We also want teachers to begin understanding temperament of children and their own temperament of children. Is that child fierce, uh, fearful? Is that child feisty? Is that child flexible? Who's in front of me? We also have data that says early childhood educators have a tendency to have a, be, to be a, a more of a fearful temperamental uh, uh, profession. So when you have a teacher that comes out of a fearful temperament and they're working with feisty kids or traumatized kids, it's, they have a tendency to oppress children. So we have to have teachers begin to understand their inner souls. We also have to have teachers to begin understanding the family histories. What's going on in the family? If we, we have teachers who will want to schedule appointments with families and they're late or they miss their appointment, but they have spent a, a lifetime of not working within the same system. So we have to have teachers look at the family histories and create a synergistic experience for, for, for families and to be able to host families where they are. We also need to take into account what's going on in our environment. Our environment is so explosive today and there's so much toxicity going on. And yet that's where the great opportunities are for us, for teachers to sit with children, to be with them, to nurture their souls so they feel emotionally safe because we know in the research that when children are emotionally safe, they will be socially safe because they know have a, they have an, a, an emotional partner to help. If they are feeling emotionally safe and socially safe, they will take academic risk. Our systems have a tendency to want to teach children to the head, 
But we have to teach to the soul and the heart first. So when they, when they enter kindergarten, that they are ready and they have the resiliency necessary to take on the next adventure. And school needs to be an adventure, not an odious experience. So as we look at teachers, children, and families, we need to look through a holistic lens and elevate the field of early childhood education and give our children the hope, the hope that they need for a better day. So we ask you, when you leave here, to begin thinking about how are you investing in your time, talent, and treasures in early childhood education, which will compound the investment as they go into the elementary, middle school, and high school. So we thank you for your thinking and drinking that in in hopes that you will make the steps necessary to hold the souls of our children. Thank you.